Hi, I'm R.L. Parker, Dark Fantasy Epic Fantasy author, and this is... Christina Parker, his editor, and spousal unit. <laughs> the reality is, is that while, you know, some of my characters have come up in books, they're not in situations that I ever played. Right. Um, you know, he's used some of my characters <clears throat> with my permission, he totally asks, and that's cool. Um, but they're not in situations that they were ever in. Um, so for me, I can't say, well, that didn't happen. Cause no, well, it didn't, I didn't play it. It doesn't mean it didn't happen. It just didn't happen in my world. Right. Cause I'm, 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 I'm actually not writing campaigns. Oh, you're, Cause you're so, actually not writing campaigns, yeah. but he's got to get the characters right. Um, well, and so let's, so to be fair, like if you looked at blood of Ravens, there's maybe six, seven different characters that are. That were always there in my mind as part of the backstory of, of this this saga, um, so they were always going to be there. They were uh, like Mordecai is somebody that players ran into back in my gaming days. Nightweaver is another one. Mm -hmm. um, what Lawrence becomes is another one. Yeah. Um, Ariel is another one. So there's a list of characters that showed up back in the D and D days that I knew were going to be part of this story. And for us, they um, were NPCs. They, they were NPCs. They were non-player characters. Most of the rest of the cast, Garen and Lila included, were all made up for the book. Mm -hmm. um, supporting cast. Yeah. Uh, almost all of the supporting cast, even some people that you could argue were main characters. Garen and Lila, first half of the book, definitely main characters. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. But they, they were made up for the story. And George R. R. Martin. Um, <laughs> spoilers. <laughs> Sorry. So, um, Don't get attached. So even then, it's not it's not that I couldn't like for, for Sarasha, for example. It's not that I couldn't have made up another character in that spot. Right. That felt to me like that was the right place for her character's mother to be. Yeah. Right. Because and, and it was. Really. I knew she was going to have half the personality that that you portrayed back in the day, and that that would have been an influence on your character mm -hmm. who didn't really know her real parents, anyways. Right. So. It all fits. Um, and I know her, who her dad is, and she has guessed who her dad is, but we're not going to reveal it in the video. Nope. Um, but point you being is I'll, I'll do stuff like that. Find out. Since I have access to her in my real life, I can ask, hey, do you mind if I use that character that fits the personality I'm looking for here? Otherwise, for like, for Dusk. I could yeah. have used somebody instead uh, of Ganadley. But you couldn't have. Oh, but, you, no, I could have. Don't give it too much away. That book just came out. <laughs> I, I could have used somebody instead of the character Ganadley for that role, right? But I knew that if I had created a, no, a girl gnome thief I'd have been mad. And, and named it anything other than Ganadley with that personality, you would have been, that's Ganadley. And, and I'd, I'd have been mad. <laughs> he's, he's not wrong. I'd have been mad. I played Ganadley for years, and I mean years. She was near and dear to my heart. Yeah. Um, um, that's something else I didn't point out. A lot of our campaigns were six to nine months long minimum. Right. And we had one that lasted a year and a half. And when I say that, we weren't the campaign group that, that meets once a month. We were playing five to six days a week. Right. This was our life. We were those <laughs> geeks. And, it, and on weekends, that was everybody got together at our house at about 4.30 on a Friday. So much fun. Literally straight from work. People would take their gaming clothes with them to work in a, a, a little bag, come to our house in uniform because we were a lot of us were Air Force. And they would change in the bathroom and come out and we'd game until Sunday night. And for those of you who are not <laughs> hardcore tabletop gamers, yes, there is a uniform. All right, it is usually either jeans or shorts, depending on the season, and t-shirt with some sort of geeky thing on it, or tank top, depending on your preference. And and it had to be clothes you were ready to get dirty. <laughs> not because we were out playing in no. a field, but because we got excited and drinks got spilled. And the the running joke amongst a lot of groups is that your character sheet isn't a real character until it's christened. Right. right, so it's got you spill on something it. on it, or somebody's pet rat pees on it, or you know, <laughs> something like that. There's always something oh in gosh. every group, but for like us, you know, and a it, we were all smokers too, so yep. you know we had a room that was filled with cigarette smoke and, and those ash, giant, giant ashtrays. old school '80s restaurant ashtrays <laughs> just filled to the brim. Oh yeah, and so um, many cases so of Doctor or Mountain Dew. You'd spit, you'd spill Taco Bell on you so, yep. or Mountain Dew. Oh yeah, because that was or... back when Taco Bell first came out with the the ten pack of tacos. Ten bucks, ten tacos. Ten bucks, ten tacos. Yep. And we was Poe. And so, so that was brilliant. Like, All right, <laughs> we're in town. You, you, and you. We're role playing. Robbie, go out for tacos. Yep, it'd be like you fly, <laughs> I'll buy. 
you hand them 20 bucks and that would feed the group. Yeah. Um, you, now you know what time period we're talking about because 20 bucks could feed five adults. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, and we had leftovers. <laughs> and we had leftovers for the next yep. morning. <laughs> Cold Taco Bell the next morning. Man. There was usually a pizza involved on those weekend sessions. Yep, yep. A pizza, maybe two. We, yep. if, if depended on the time because at one point we had a buddy who was a pizza driver and he would bring pizzas that people had rejected at the door to D&D sessions. I'll let you in on something. He would have a friend call, call in an order and, then, and then claim it was the wrong order when it showed up. <laughs> of course. To get us free pizza, and then he would get his pizza that he paid for. Don't so do that. Don't kids. do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. You know, and don't I, do it I, I to was, your Uber driver either, because that's wrong. That was Air Force back in the day where we were paid less than minimum wage. So right, right. and I was a waitress, so <laughs> they we made the same in the '90s as you do today. So that's yeah. that's you know, um, but the tips are better these days. Yeah, we didn't add a, a, a full-time woman to the group until Robbie married Jenny. Yeah, until Jenny moved down. Um, and then she Robbie. always played tieflings and stuff like that. Always. Always, always a tiefling healer. Always a spellcaster. Yep, mages and healers. Um, I always played a fighter of some sort. Thief, ranger. Yes, back when rangers were cool. And I don't want to say the word, but the big problem with gaming with Robbie, and Robbie, I know you're going to watch this video, was... Keeping him from constantly saying the, the slang term for male genitalia. Oh gosh, yes. Literally every five seconds. Every, but that was that was his thing at that time, yep. you know. Our friend Tim ran a campaign. It was like supposed to be a one shot, right? And we're walking into this crypt okay. where this this dark priest standing in front of this this altar, and there's channels of human blood filled to the brim running down the floor. And Tim's like, and you see these things sticking out of the wall, holding up a giant. And Robbie just blurts the word. And Penis! <laughs> and it, you know, that was what it was like gaming with Robbie. Uh, one of Robbie's characters is entering in the next book, Enveloped by Dark's Embrace. I, know, I think I know who you're bringing in, so um, his favorite. Lathanus. Yeah, Lathanus. Um, <laughs> and a couple of hers are coming in in the next book. So I, I do want to tell... A little bit of that la, story. La, 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 la. No, 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 oh, okay. from, from the campaign. So uh -oh. <laughs> I, want, I want to tell a little bit of this story because it's not going to be what happens in the novels. Right. Um, but it was an interesting thing, and it kind of stuck these characters in everybody's mind. So everybody that was in that campaign, even the guys we had come in for a weekend or two, <sighs> they just like, day. oh, my God. Because, yeah, there was there was much anger that day. There was, there was a... There uh, might have been some angst. <laughs> well, there was, there was a lot of anger and angst. Uh, the guys you people trounced were... Not happy. Two of them didn't come back to the group. That's true. So she was running a character named Darkstorm, who will be a child in the next novel. Um, and Robbie was playing Lathanus, who was a ranger. Ranger. He um, was a lawful good ranger. No, yeah, yeah. And so regardless of the type of good you are for alignment, rangers, at least in that rule set in AD&D 2, they had to be good, and you had to do good things. If you If you did an evil thing... You could lose your ability to be a ranger, almost like a paladin could lose right, their, yeah. their godhood could, and their paladinhood. Yeah, to commune with animals, to so, track, to you, you could lose these these abilities that that you have because you're a good individual. So I I rolled when everybody was creating their characters for that campaign. I I randomly rolled to see who was going to be the victim of this thing, and Lathanus came up. Um, so I gave him dreams constantly that were kind of screwing with him and, and screwing with his sense of reality and screwing with his sense of self and um and they were all very very purposeful um and it was at least one per game day where i'd pull him aside and tell everybody else hey take a break robbie come with me we go in another room and i'd role play out this dream he's having and i did the same with her but with her with dark storm it was different um, so Darkstorm was an assassin that was lying to the group about who she was. I was and just a thief. She was just yeah. a thief. She was just a scout. Just they a scout. they never questioned it. She never. did good role playing. Because that like, was chaotic evil. <laughs> there was a, a keep they went to where her target, just as a, an aside, her target was in that keep. The party was after somebody else. Um, but the party didn't need to kill their way through the, the, the place. But she successfully convinced everybody in the party that, hey, these are bad people. And they were. But... They could have gotten in and out without combat. Um, but she convinced them that combat was just absolutely necessary. And as the party starts fighting, she left and scaled the tower and killed the person and scaled back down, joined the fight, and kept going. Yeah. All successfully. Um, so that's that's the type of person she was playing. Now, 
She was actually a student of somebody I won't mention, uh, world renowned don't. assassin. Mm. Um, but that meant she was dark. She, so she was on the evil side in the party, anyways. And then what ended up happening was the party was after somebody they probably never should have gone after. Um, I had steered them towards going towards this one problem. And instead of solving that problem, they tried to find the person that caused it, avoided fixing that, and tried to go after the big honcho. Bad move. In that effort, you know, campaign went on for about six months, and it just got worse and worse and worse. They kept running into fights they should not have been trying to run into. Um, Oblix died to that yeah. that one guy in the tunnel. They ran into a guy that I was t I was telling them with every NPC, don't fucking go there, and they went anyways. And this guy, power word kill, killed Oblix, fell fell dead, and then it's a paladin. And then the whole rest of the party ran. <laughs> we were like, oh crap, but out of it dodge, was, bye. <laughs> it was that kind of thing constantly with them. So this is a, a high combat campaign, but it was a high failure rate campaign. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and it was totally all my character's fault. No, not just you. I mean, it was it was everybody started making the same bad decisions. They so, just followed along. Um, but it, everybody was so gung-ho. And part of the problem was that Oblix, for example, was a cavalier. So I upscaled a, a first edition cavalier, a, a, an actual D&D. &D. Cavalier to AD and D two, and Cavaliers can't say no to a fight. Basically, no, they no. have no fear. They're not allowed to run in fear. Nope, nope. So, if they get challenged, they're there. They're the first ones with swords drawn. So, anyways, it was going wrong, wrong, wrong. Every time they turn around, and it, and Lathanus' own situation was just getting worse and worse and worse. He was getting more susceptible to these dreams. He was, you know, starting to question everything. And then he finally had the one dream where the main villain, the one they shouldn't have been going after pops up and I pulled the I'm your dad thing. <laughs> Which in, in context with it building up the way it did, it was like very epic. And Robbie was like, no! And he was screaming in the side room with me and they, yeah, they're they like, like, what's oh, going boy. on? We walk but out and I'm like, us. no, no, all of you guys were sleeping. So you're not allowed to know what's going on. All you know is that Lathanus woke up in a panic. And That's it. That's all you know. she had been poking and prodding at, at Lathanus for a while of, hey, we should team up and get out of here. Because she respected him. Mm-hmm. Um, and so he wakes her up. I don't know if you were on watch. So she was on watch. Lathanus wa wakes up and goes over to Darkstorm and is like, all right, let's do it. And they slaughtered the party. <laughs> <laughs> they killed all of the other player characters. They left no one alive. And so our lawful good uh, ranger turned into a lawful evil fighter i think is what he ended up yep. as or a druid yep. or something I, well, I, I was nice i turned him into a duelist and this this character was robbie's baby so to have the character literally ripped out from underneath him oh he was mad me i played my character i chuckled about it um and oh he he was so mad i think he stormed out that day that was the day he left early and was like yeah. screw you guys i'm going home he was back the next week it was next back the next week and he was okay and he was like okay so how do i even play this because a lot of people never play evil characters i mean up until dark storm i always played chaotic good that was easy you know it was it's what most aligns with my natural character so playing a chaotic evil character i was like okay so i can maybe play that more manipulative side of of me you know um and and explore that and that that for me was always what DD was great for was kind of exploring this aspect of your personality that maybe you hadn't presented to people and being like you know maybe i won't hold on to that side we just we just sweep that one back under the rug um but <laughs> dark storm was a lot of fun to play but i don't think that's who i want to be um, and it was, for me, it was a lot of fun because, you know, we'd go into a tavern and I'd pick up a contract to go and kill so-and-so and I would manipulate the party into going to so-and-so's place of residence, some keep or tower or town or something, and I'd get them into a brawl. Do you remember the name of that and DM? And I'd slip out. That my sister brought us into Jeff. a campaign with? Jeff. Jeff. You think Jeff regrets letting me play that assassin? I'm sure, yes. See, and then, yeah. Like, I, I feel like anytime you let somebody play an assassin in a mostly good party, some shit's going to go down. Two campaign sessions, I turned the lawful good paladin in the party evil. I he convinced left too the, and, and didn't come back. I, I convinced, he, he tried to flip the table on his yeah, way out. He, he just, and he couldn't lift it, and he stormed out. Couldn't lift it. No, I, I, 
I, t I convinced the party that I was a scout, and every time that the paladin was going to do any kind of detect evil, I, I made sure to be behind him because it's a cone. Yep, it's cone so I, I, you know, I rolled for arcane. I had arcane knowledge on my character, so I rolled an arcane knowledge check with the DM the first time it happened, and I'm like, I clearly I know what's going on, so I'm going to be behind him. Um, but uh, my contract was traveling the road we were traveling, and I knew we would catch up with him because he was going the opposite direction, and I, I beat the shit out of myself at one night when I was on on watch duty and I knew he was nearby so I went to a tree and bashed my face into a tree and all this other stuff go back to the party wake the paladin I'm like I got jumped he's like where is the man and, yep. like he went off and didn't question anything charged off and killed a priest <laughs> and his two guards and the DM just slid him a piece of paper and I chuckled and took the contract money and walked off <laughs> we waited for him to open that piece of paper because I think I was the only one as a player who knew what you were actually playing yeah. and I was like I was sitting in my corner of the table going oh my god 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 <laughs> and like trying not to let anything slip and trying to keep my face as placid as possible because I knew what was coming and yeah the DM like slid this piece of paper folded up across the table to this guy and he stood up and tried to do a table flip but he was um, your standard geek and not very strong um, so couldn't flip the table um, and ended up storming out called Rick all sorts of names and we were like so sorry we're you know that's that, that, these things can happen but the reality is is that Rick played his character to a T it was perfectly played perfectly planned and this pal poor paladin fell and fell for it, you know. And and what should have happened happened was he lost his link to his god and became evil. Yep. Because he had killed an innocent man and killed a, a priest, priest of the same god and a priest <laughs> and that. Um, but that's the same character that ended up becoming a priest, isn't it? Like made a no, god. No, no. So it was a different. Was that a different? We, one? He killed the campaign after that because nobody wanted to play with my assassin. So. We started, <laughs> we started a new campaign, and he m demanded I play a duelist. Oh, and that was just stupid of him. And uh, we were just rocking it. And the whole time we're playing this campaign, it's just stupid little encounters. It's modules. But every it's, time, it's every time we, we got loot, I, I was like, I had told him at the, at the start, you know, yeah. I, I'm, I'm a servant of, you know, this god. I can't remember the name of the god at the time. Some elven moon goddess or something. I don't like, I'm a, I'm a servant of this god. That's who I worship. Um, and he didn't do his research on it. I did. And every single time we got loot, I asked, is there a lapis lazuli? Yeah. That's and so the, it's the most worthless gem you can get. So it didn't, didn't have a lot of co you know, coin value. So every time he would like, yeah, sure. And, and I'm like, how many? And he'd roll and be like, oh, there's 12. Oh, there's five or six or and whatever. And the party was like, they're not worth anything. Yeah, sure. Yeah, you can have them all because I was giving them my gold. Uh oh, we're going to have a problem. When we went to a town, I would get my money through dueling, so I didn't need I didn't need gold from the party loot. So I got all the lapis lazuli, and then we had this downtime in a big city. And uh, she's going to step away and take the dog out. This downtime in a big city, and I took advantage of this. And I'm like, all right, is there a holy site or or a grove or something outside of town? And I went outside of town and ended up doing a god call of my god. And he was like, well, to attempt this, you know, you're going to need, and I, I'm like, all right, I've kept count. I've got, you know, 3,620 of these things in these two satchels that I've been carrying on the back of my horse this whole campaign. So we spilled all these out, and then I, you know, I had to roll for all these things in the ritual, and I actually succeeded. When it came down to it, he, he was like, all right, roll a D100. If you roll a 99 or a 100, I'll give you the God call. So I rolled a 99. And he said, all right, that's a fluke uh roll a d6 if it's one to three she isn't happy that you called her if it's a four to six then she's happy you called her i rolled a two so she was unhappy that i called her and uh she gave me what i asked for i forget what that even was because it was something about viewing your weapon or, or yeah something, something like that. that but she she made me a priest yeah he had to convert. as my she's like all right well fine you have to convert and serve me now or i kill you and i'm like all right great but he made me a priest this was his mistake. Right. Dual-wielded maces. So he effectively now, played a monk. I played a duelist monk, basically, with priest spells and dual-wielding maces. 
That should never happen. If you're a DM, don't let that happen. Don't, because any player who's worth their salt pulls out the monk compendium <laughs> and goes, so this is what I am now, right? And the guy was first edition only guy He's and like, hadn't sure. even explored anything beyond <laughs> that and said, yeah, and I groaned and I was like, you're just dumb. So because we're if level- you don't understand what the monk compendium turns you into... They basically turned him into a Tibetan uh, martial arts monk. War monk um, with, with dual wield maces. So, yeah, he had like... <laughs> One of which was enchanted because I succeeded on my god call. Yeah, yeah, he, he had Bruce Lee fists <laughs> and like, you know, like his feet were like D5 damage so, and yeah, it we, was ridiculous. We, you know, we're traveling and he's chuckling thinking he did a bad thing to me and that I was going to learn my lesson. And uh, no... Uh, we, we ended up trouncing his next three encounters so badly. So bad. That, like, nobody even got a chance to take damage. Things were dying that fast. And he was pissed, and you could see his face going red. I and think that's when we bowed out gracefully. No, no, no. <laughs> he threw it the next night was when he threw an ancient worm at us. Oh, that's right. Thinking, I'll teach you guys a lesson. We were a fifth-level party. <laughs> no way we should have been able to take out a, no. uh, an ancient worm. But we had a monk. I damn near soloed it. Yeah, we had a monk. <laughs> <laughs> I damn near soloed that dragon. Um, so yeah, so I, like we only played two campaigns with that guy, and, and eventually I was like, I can't play with him anymore. No. I'm like, it's modules, it's first edition. Not that I don't, I, I don't like first edition. I do actually really enjoy first edition, it's but be not properly. when it's like module after module after module. I I need um, creativity. I need more creativity than that. Yeah. 